Hey y'all, Irix Guy here, and I'm going to show you the best waterproof and ruggedized case for the Phantom 3. Now this is the uh, Phantom 3 Professional, uh, but it'll also work with the with the Phantom 3 Advanced, which is the uh, 1080p version. This is the 4K video version. And it will work with quick disconnect prop guards. You can see here I've got the quick disconnect prop guards. So when I put them in the case, I just take them off, as you can see here, and I can fit the prop guards in the case with the fan. So for starters, what we're going to do, and again, check the link within this video's description. You can find where to order this case online. It comes in a variety of colors. This, of course, is yellow. And, and I like yellow because when I'm swimming with it, uh, this being a waterproof and ruggedized case, when I'm swimming with it, it creates a very nice contrast against the water. So it's easy to see should it fall out of my hands. Very nice foam on the inside. Uh, the first thing we're going to do here, there's going to be a couple layers of foam. And it is perforated, so we're going to get to that here in a minute. So you got two layers of this. Take these out, put them aside. Put your Phantom 3 inside the case before you proceed, just to, uh, to give yourself peace of mind and gently close the case to make sure it fits, and it does. Obviously it does because I measured all of this ahead of time, but this case is cool because it's got a lock. You can lock it to better prevent it from popping open. You've also got a hole here and a hole here should you decide to attach a TSA approved lock. Now what a TSA approved lock is if you're going through the airport, it enables uh, TSA to pop it open without a combination or a key. They have a special key to open them so they can get in and inspect your case and you can have it on there so when you're in baggage uh, in, you know, getting your bags at the baggage claim it would better prevent someone from just popping open your case and potentially stealing your your Phantom 3 and or other goodness. Now how you decide to configure this is up to you. If you put this in the middle like this, it's going to provide you with the opportunity, should you decide to do so, to leave your propellers attached. Personally, I take my propellers off before I put it in the case, just because I feel that it's that it's likely going to prolong the life of the propellers, and especially now, DJI gives you this cool little bag for the propeller, so we'll make room for it inside of the case. But if you wanted to, you know, just keep in mind when you're when you're plucking the foam. If you wanted to keep your uh, to keep your props on when you store it, put your props on first, and just be sure that the position of where you make the phantom fit is in a position that will allow the full length of props to go out and not make contact with the ends of the case. So this right here would be that spot. So. We're going to do this in a couple of steps. The first step we're going to do is we're going to get one of the two foam layers. We're going to pick the Phantom up now that we know it fits. And we're going to put this one foam layer down in here. Now push it in all the way. Make sure it's, make sure it's flat with the, with the base foam layer that, that we did not have to remove. So we removed the top two. Then position your Phantom again in the middle of the case. And just kind of visually inspect and in your mind say, is that where I want it? And if you're the measuring type person, maybe pull out a tape measure and you know make sure everything's squared up. I'm a visual kind of person, so I don't use that. So I think this is good. Keep in mind, foam is going to um, foam is going to expand a little bit. So you're going to want to start out with it tighter than you think it might be. So instead of plucking the foam on the side of this leg, I'm going to start plucking the foam right here. And again, we and see these are the little pieces that come out little bitty cubes, or not cubes, but rectangles. 
Now, I would do them, you know, piece by piece, just kind of until you get, you get a feel for what you're going to want to do lengthwise. So now I know I can do more at once. So I'm going to do three on this pool. And again, keep it smaller than you think you might want it because you want it to be tight to hold your Phantom securely during transport, especially if you're doing air travel where it's potentially tossed around by people that don't care. You want to make sure it's locked in there securely. So now I'll take one more piece here. And that's perfect. So now we can comfortably, comfortably go to about right here. And you don't have to take the time to pluck piece by piece at that point. This is so easy. You can see how effortlessly I'm able to pluck that out. But even with it being effortless, it's still not so easy to come out that it's just going to come out on its own, which is good. So the idea here is to start with the primary piece, which in this case is the Phantom 3 Professional. And then we're going to pluck things for our other custom component. Now see what I was talking about, keeping it smaller than you thought? That way it doesn't wobble. So, you know, one might think that the hole would need to be bigger, but actually not the case. It needs to be smaller. And actually, you know, I may take, yeah, I'm going to take one more row out. That was just a little bit too tight. So that's perfect. It fits in. It's not too loose. It's not too tight. So that's layer number one. What we're going to do now is remove the Phantom. We're going to remove gently because we don't want to tear anything. This foam layer. We're going to get our second foam layer and we're going to position it directly below this foam layer. So we're using this foam layer that fits the Phantom perfectly as a template. And we're just going to pluck the exact same pattern that we have in the top layer. So now we got the exact same pattern on top as we do bottom. Now what you're going to notice when you stick this in, you're going to need to perform an additional step. And that step is for this battery. So again, start small and then get bigger if needed. And the battery part is only going to have to go to the top layer, so you're not going to have to pluck the bottom as well because it doesn't extend down that low. Okay, so now the question is, is it necessary to cut out where these arms are? Because of this case, as we initially demonstrated, the legs without with the two foam pieces removed, the bottom of the landing gear was flush with the bottom of the case. As this is, the landing gear is flush with the bottom of the case. 
So even if you plucked out foam there, it's not going to do anything because this phantom is not is not going to sit any lower in the case. This is perfect. So now what we want to do is take into account what might we be carrying along with this. Obviously, your controller. So fold your controller. And don't get in a hurry because this is where you can compromise extra space for goodies if you're not careful. The part directly around the Phantom, I probably wouldn't put any si anything inside of that area just because I want to keep that structurally sound as possible to prevent it from moving. What I would do, and this is up to you, I think what I'm going to do with the controller, I'm going to get as close to the corner as I can. And then that'll leave some room up here for batteries, charger, etc. And then I've got all this real estate over here for future batteries and you know other other accessories that I may pick up. You know, maybe you're flying with a tablet that's dedicated to use with your Phantom, and you just want to throw that tablet in here. You could do a cutout for it. Um, but for now, let's get the controller. So what I'm going to do here is start you know, right here. And I left a couple of layers between the, the wall of the case. And now we're going to go down to the second layer.
you can see, and that doesn't have any jiggle to it. It's, uh, and actually you may want to, may want to allow a little bit more room on this right side. Let's see. Now I think that's firm. And then that's, see, that's not going to go anywhere. See, so that's got your controller and your Phantom taken care of. Uh, now, the other thing you would want to have in here would be your wall charger. So what I would do with it is unplug the the electrical cable. Just kind of sit it aside. And then I would make a cutout for this uh, for this power brick right here. Let me see if that's too tall to close because there's a, on this case has wheels, so there's a wheel well. Let's see. And obviously, I don't have the Phantom or anything making contact that would damage anything if it was, no, it's, it was a cord on the side. So see that's perfect and actually you want stuff to be kind of tight and sticking up a little because when this foam comes down that that just makes it stay stationary. So now you've got this, um, you know, and as you get extra batteries what you can do is, uh, and see I can just kind of tuck this around the controller. That way I don't have to pluck anything else out. And the same with the power cord right here. You, you, you could pluck a piece for it if you wanted to, but I mean, you've already got this controller area, so you know, you could stick it there. I wouldn't stick it down by the camera by any means. I would keep that underbelly of the Phantom, ex, you know, keep it uh, reserved exclusively for your Phantom, and that's it. You don't want anything hitting your camera. See all of that fits now. The good thing about this case is that, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you've got these thumb locks, which they just prevent it from popping open. But then you've got the TSA, you put a TSA lock on there. And the good thing about this, you don't get in a lot of cases, see this locks, but when you push down and pull out, you've got a handle for rolling it through an airport. And then you've got these really nice wheels. So, good case. Without a doubt, the uh, the best case for the Phantom Three. You know, that's the Phantom Three and the Phantom uh, the Phantom Three Pro, like I have, or the Phantom Three Advanced. So, check the link within this video's description. You can order this case in a variety of colors, and you can also order the Phantom Three, the Quick Disconnect Prop Guards. And I'll be to posting a ton of accessories there soon as well. So check it out. And look at all this extra space. So as you get more batteries, you know, pluck it out. 
put you a lot of batteries in there. Oh, we forgot one thing. <laughs> Before this video ends, we need to make sure we've got our props in there. So, you know, really, you know, this is up to you how you would want to put these in there. Um, let's see. And one thing to keep in mind too, if you did plan to uh, to transport it with the prop zone, you would want to move this controller just a little bit this way, because otherwise that prop would be be hitting that. But for these, you can just cut out a slit over here, or you know, honestly, they're so flat, they're not up as high as the as the Phantom, so they're not going to make contact with the case. If I didn't have any extra back, I would probably just put it in like that, just on top, and then save that foam plucking for uh, for extra batteries. You know, maybe a tablet, uh, that sort of thing. Because keep in mind, even if you're using a phone with it, there's situations where you may be filming and you have to swim. And this provides you with a waterproof and ruggedized case to get to and from those shots with all of your equipment. So thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to youtube.com forward slash irixguy. And again, check the link within this video's description. You can order this case online. Y'all have a good day.